Welcome to the course on VLSI Physical Design with Timing Analysis. In this lecture, we will discuss about how to do timing analysis in case of a pulsed latch based system. The content of this lecture includes maximum timing analysis of a pulsed latch based system and minimum timing analysis of a pulsed latch based system. So now we will discuss about another type of latch called pulsed latch. Okay. So we will discuss about the second type of latch called pulsed latch. So, in case of two phase latch, we are using phi 1 and phi 2, which is out of phase or they, they are uh, inverted version of each other. But in case of a pulsed latch, we are using a small pulse to all the latches. The same pulse will be applied to all the latches. So, the same pulse will be applied to all the latches in the system. So, how the system will look like? You have a uh, basically latch 1 here. latch 2 here, then you have a combinational logic is there, then it is going to this one, then your pulse is phi p, this is phi p. Now this is d1, this is q1, this is d2, this is q2. Okay. Now you have two cases here. And now we will do for maximum delay constraint. Okay. The first case is max delay constraint. So, what we are doing here? I, we have two cases. Case 1, let us say A, case 1, case 1 where your T pulse width is greater than T setup. T pulse width is greater than T setup. So, how the things will look like? So, here you, we have a uh, basically pulse which is going to all the latches at the same time. So, when the pulse is high, then it will evaluate. When the pulse is low, it will not evaluate, but the combinational logic will do their job. So, pulse is used to only sample the data. So, if you can see here, we have a pulse. like this. So, this is your pulse width. Okay. So, this is your T P W. Okay. Now, we are uh, basically giving the data D 1. Okay. So, let us say this is D 1. So, your data is changing inside the positive half cycle. Let us say this is D 1. Then your Q 1 will appear after a delay of D to Q. Okay, so, this is maximum delay I need to take because I am doing the max timing analysis. So, from here to here, this delay is my T B to Q, okay, maximum okay, of the latch 1. Now, the data is available here, this Q 1, now the data is available here, this Q 1. Now, I need to, uh, need to consider D 2, okay. So, my, how the D 2? So, the D 2 will basically change after some delay. D2 will, uh, will change after some combinational delay. So, from here to here, this delay is called T combinational 1 maximum. Okay. So, now this since uh, my pulse width, okay, my pulse width is greater than this pulse width is uh, greater than my setup time. Okay. Your data can come inside the pulse to be sampled, okay, not a problem. So, now we have uh, this uh, what will be the uh, constraint in this case? What will be my uh, timing constraint in this case? The timing constraint in this case will be basically T clock should be greater than equals to T D to Q maximum plus T combinational 
one maximum. Since you have only one latch is used, you can uh, use uh, basically you can remove the one also. Then this is same as your T P D Q plus T P D. So this is the constant for a pulse latch based system. Okay. So what is the overhead here? This overhead is basically T P D. Okay. So what is the sequencing overhead? The sequencing overhead. overhead is basically T combinational should be less than equals to T clock minus T D to Q T combinational maximum D to Q maximum. So, this is your sequencing overhead while you are using the pulsed latch based system, but in case of a two phase latch. Uh, the overhead is 2 T D to Q maximum. So, this is the time period from here to here. So, this is my T clock actually. Now, we will consider the case 2 B case, case 2 where my basically the pulse width T pulse width is less than T setup. Okay. So, everything is same I am not drawing the latch diagram right now I will just draw the timing diagram. So, we will start with the pulse okay? so, or the phi p I will have a pulse which uh, width is smaller than my setup time of the latch. Okay? So, now this is the pulse phi p now I have data d 1 okay? data is coming early because my pulse width is less than setup time. So, what will happen is that it you have to consider q 1 which is basically this q 1. So, this q 1 will take some time to come out. Okay. So, this time is basically my t clock to q minimum t clock to q minimum now basically your data need to be come to d2 so i need to look into how much time it will take to go to d2 so we have a big combinational delay is there so it will take more time so let's say i'll take more time to reach d2 but we have one problem here what is the problem earlier case your d2 can reach the pulse any time, but since your pulse width is less than my setup time, it should come earlier than my rising edge of the pulse. Okay. So, here it should come earlier than my setup time, because my setup time is larger than the let us say the setup time of the flop is larger T setup than my the pulse width TPW. So, to satisfy my setup time your the combinational part should be evaluated and reach before the falling edge of the pulse. This is my hard edge before that falling edge my data D 2 should reach the latch 2. So, this time before my falling edge your D 2 should be evaluated. So, this time from here to here is my T combinational maximum. This will be maximum. Now, what will be my constraint now? So, I have very interesting constraint here. If you can see here, from here I need to consider till this point, till this point. But if I include my this one, then I can satisfy my setup time. So, what will happen is that your T clock, this is my T clock and this is my T P W. So, let us say T clock plus T P W is in the left hand side, it should be greater than equals to what are the things there? T 
peak log to q maximum plus t combinational maximum plus t setup this is my constraint okay so my peak log should be greater than equals to clock to q maximum t combinational maximum plus t setup minus t p w so this is my constraint put it into a box so now we have the timing constraint where your pulse width is less than t setup is this much so i can combine the both the things and i can write the combined equation here the t clock should be greater than equal to maximum of t d to q max plus t combinational max which is coming for a case where my t pulse width is greater than t setup this is the constant coming from this and the second constant comes you have t clock to q maximum plus t combinational maximum plus t setup minus t pulse width so this is the case for t pulse width is greater than t setup this is a case where t pulse width is less than t setup so we have two cases we need to take the max to find the time period similarly you can find the sequencing overhead in this case t combinational maximum should be less than equals to t clock minus max of let's say this from here to here is called t1 and this constant is called t2 this expression is then i can write t1 comma t2 so this is my sequencing overhead in case of pulse latch based system now we'll go to the mean delay constraint the case 2 mean delay analysis in case of pulse latch based system so let's take a latch l1 this is d1 this is q1 now i have a combinational delay why this latch is done like this basically is that we are looking into the same timing edge that's why these two latches are drawn in the same line okay so whenever you are considering the hold violation we are considering the same clock edge that's why two latches are in the same column okay so now we'll discuss uh, how i can do the timing analysis in this case so if you can see we have one pulse is there okay so now i have uh, basically the phi phi p i need to plot first so the timing diagram of phi is this one this uh, let's say i did little bigger to make it more clear but uh, you can make it smaller also not a problem so this is t p w okay pulse width so this is d1 okay so the d1 okay so it is coming earlier to the pulse like this so this d1 is same as this d1 now you have q1 q1 is this q1 
So, it will take some time, but when it will come uh, appear, it will appear after the rising edge of the clock. Okay. So, this delay it is my T clock to Q minimum because I am doing mean delay analysis. So, I have to take T clock to Q minimum after Q1. Now, I have to consider D2. So, D2 will appear after this combinational delay. So, this combinational delay should be minimum delay okay, from here to here. This is your T combinational minimum. So, now your hold time will be around the falling edge of the pulse. So, this is my hold time. As I discussed, the setup and hold will be around the falling edge. So, the, this hold time is around this one. So, this is your T hold actually. So, my T hold requirement will be now will be T hold. So, your data should be stable at least till this whole point. Okay. So, my T hold requirement is that T hold this one and plus T PW should be less than equal to my I will start from here. So, this one this clock is I am starting from here T clock to Q minimum plus T combinational minimum. Then you do not have any hold violation. So, this is my hold constraint in case of a pulse latch. So, the T combinational minimum should be greater than equals to T hold plus T P W minus T clock to Q minimum to satisfy my hold requirement. So, the combinational delay should be more to satisfy the hold requirement. Since there is no overlapping pulse here on like a two phase latch, so the hold requirement is severe in case of a pulse latch. In this lecture, we discussed about the maximum and minimum timing analysis of a pulsed latch based system. Thank you for your attention.